Grade 8 Math, number 8.5D, Solving Special Systems. And this is all about systems of linear equations. We're going to end this chapter. We're going to solve algebraically for one, no, or many solutions. So it's kind of a recap, so it's good to watch. So remember, special systems are systems of equations that have no solution or an infinite amount of solutions, okay? That's why they're special. They either have no solution or an infinite amount, okay? And from this entire chapter, this is what I want you to remember. To eliminate fractions, you multiply each denominator by the least common multiple. To eliminate decimals, we multiply each term by a power of 10, enough to get rid of the largest decimal place, okay? To eliminate parentheses, we use the distributive property. And when the same variable is on both sides of the equation, both sides of the equal sign, we add or subtract to eliminate it from one of the sides. And remember, intersecting lines have one solution at the point of the intersection where it crosses, okay, where it touches. Parallel lines have no solution because they don't touch. They're parallel to each other. And the same lines, lines that are on top of each other, make infinite true solutions because they're touching each other infinitely because they're on top of each other, okay? So here's our recap. Solving for one solution algebraically. This is our system of equations. These are uh, linear equations. The first thing we're going to do is notice that there's a 2 and a 4, and there's a 6 and a 3. So we can multiply one of them by a 2 or a negative 2, to make it match the other one so that we can eliminate, can't we? So I chose to multiply this one by negative 2, all right? So this is the second equation. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Positive 4 times negative 2 is a negative 8. And negative 25 times negative 2 makes a positive 50, okay? So now I can stack the two equations, the 6x plus 2y equals minus 10, negative 10, goes on top of it. I'm going to add to eliminate it. See, we have addition over here. So if we've got a positive 6 and a negative 6, that's going to create a zero pair, right? And we can eliminate that. That's gone. And now we've got negative 2 take away, added to a negative, we're adding, to a negative 8. That gives us a negative 10. And if you have negative 10 and you add 50 to it, that's going to bring you up out of zero to a positive 40. So now we've got negative 10y equals 40. We can divide each side by this negative 10 to get the y by itself. That creates our buddy, the invisible 1. And 40 divided by negative 10 is negative 4. So we now know that y is negative 4. We plug that in to the other equation to solve for y, to solve for x, I mean. And in the place of y, we put the negative 4. And negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. So now we got 6x plus 8 equals negative 10. We can subtract that 8 from each side, create a zero pair, and eliminate this. And we've got 6x equals negative 18. Divide each side by 6, because that's the inverse of multiplication right here. This means multiplication is 6 times some number, x. That gives us our buddy, the invisible 1, again. And now we've got x equals negative 3 because 18 divided by 6 is negative 3. And that's our solution set, negative 3, negative 4. See? Now, this is the no solution. Here is our system of linear equations. And I'm going to multiply the second equation by 2. That's going to make it match this 2y up here, isn't it? So we've got 3x times 2 is 6x and y times 2 is 2y, and 4 times 2 is 8. Now, we can subtract to eliminate. We've got this 6x minus a 6x creates a 0 pair, and now these are gone. And 2y take away 2y is a 0 pair, and now these are gone. So now all we're left with is negative 4 minus a positive 8. We add the opposite. We get a negative 4, so we know now that 0 equals negative 4, and there's no solution. 0 doesn't equal negative 4. If graphed, these lines would be parallel, wouldn't they? There's no solution. It's a false statement. All right, let's take a look at this one. Now, this one's going to have many solutions. So the first thing I'm going to do is multiply this first equation by negative 5 to get these to match. So we move it down here to do it. So it's 
clear and an open space and we've got x times negative 5 is negative 5 and negative 3y times a negative 5 makes a positive 15y and 4 times negative 5 is negative 20 and now look it's identical to the other equation they're absolutely the same when we subtract them we get 0x plus 0y equals 0 that means 0 equals 0 that's true and there's an infinite number of solutions. If we graphed this, the lines would be on top of each other. So do you see what happens? When it's true and the lines are on top of each other, we've got 0 equals 0, or negative 3 equals negative 3, or 29 equals 29. That means the lines are on top of each other. When it's a false statement like 0 equals negative 4 or 5 equals 6 or something that doesn't make sense, then there's no solution in their parallel. When we come up with an exact point for x and y, then we know there's one solution, okay? So, specific x and y values means there's one solution. When the statement is false, there's no solution, they're parallel. When the, it's a true statement, it means there's infinite solutions because they're on top of each other, okay? Now, the other thing I want you to remember before we move on to transformational geometry in Chapter 9 is if two lines are not parallel, and you know they're not parallel, but they don't intersect on a graph, well, then the graph isn't big enough to see where they cross. Maybe the coordinates are negative 125, you know, and it's so far away off the graph and your paper isn't big enough, okay? So maybe you need to make your increments smaller. Maybe instead of having your coordinate plane x and y values numbered by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, maybe you could do it by tens or by fifties or by hundreds so that you can condense the numbers so that your lines can fit onto the paper, onto the graph, okay? All right, so that is our recap. I hope you really got something out of this chapter. I hope you understand now. And I know this is eighth grade math, and I know a lot of you can get really confused and some of this is really hard. Go back and watch some videos again if you had some trouble. I covered a lot of information in this chapter 8. Any video with an 8 here, you really need to watch it if you didn't understand. Watch every single video if you didn't understand because that means you missed something that I talked about, okay? And you won't have to study so much if you watch every single video because I repeat myself so much. You don't end up having to study as hard because you remember from me repeating it over and over and over again, okay? It's a lot easier to watch a video than it is to study by yourself, isn't it? Okay, we're going to move on to Chapter 9. We're going to do transformational geometry and we're going to do translations. And I hope to see you there. Keep your chin up. Keep trying. I'm going to stick with this until we're finished with 8th grade math, okay? We can do this together. Bye.